we got to save the Great Lakes not just from oil spills, we got to save them from carbon spills. The level of the lakes uh, uh, keeps shrinking year after year because it doesn't get cold enough most winters now to cover them with ice, and so evaporation goes on and on and on. But then you get huge rainstorms, and the Chicago River reverses, and it dumps huge amounts of sewage, and on and on and on. So the good news is, that we know what we need to do to stop this. We know what we can do. The technology is no secret. It's just we have to put it to use. Look at the one country that really did put it to use so far, Germany. Germany, Germany, which in exactly the same latitude as Michigan. I mean, Munich is north of Montreal, okay? There were days this summer already when Germany generated more than half the power it used from solar panels within its borders. And that's because, that's not because they have endless sun, that's because they have political will. You know, there are more solar panels in Bavaria than there are in the United States. Think what a country could do that had, oh, I don't know, Florida and Texas and New Mexico and Arizona, California to, to generate power. Think what we could do here today in northern Michigan. Um, um, think of all the sun that's going to waste. In fact, you know what we're having here today? We're having a solar spill all around us, and, and, and we, need that. we need that energy so that we can get rid of this other kind of energy and fast. The other piece of good news, even more important piece of good news, is that people are coming together in the most amazing ways now. You are connected to them too connected to people all over this country who are joining in this summer heat thing or the people who are in Washington at that forward and connected to people all over the world. 350.org works in every country on the planet except North Korea. We've had about 20,000 rallies like this all over the place. And it has, and this is important, nothing to do really with leaders, you know. Um, um, it's not that I'm making it happen or somebody else is making it happen. This isn't like that anymore. Um, 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 we're in a different age when we're interconnected in the most profound ways. And so the movement needs to look a lot like that energy grid needs to look. Just like we don't want a few big, huge coal-fired power plants, you know, belching out smoke, we don't need a few leaders, you know. We need a million rooftops with solar panels on them, and we need a million people in their local communities doing the kind of organizing that people are doing in TC350, that people are doing, people are doing in Madison and in Wisconsin to stop the mining for fracking that people are doing here in Michigan to pass this referendum to stop fracking in Michigan, which, by the way, by the way, is not some impossible dream, you know. Um, so far in New York, we've been able to stop fracking. Vermont, where Sue and I come from, the first state to ban fracking. Um, um, the province. The province of Quebec banned fracking. The country of France banned fracking. It's not the same kind of stuff happening so many places. And here's the final piece of good news. You know, as, as things like 350 have tried to provide a spark, and as you've all have made it into a flame, you know, that flame is getting big enough now that it is really starting to make a difference. I'm starting to think, though I'm kind of a pessimistic person sometimes by nature. I mean, I wrote a book called The End of Nature, you know. Um, 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 I'm starting to think we may actually win this big fight. You know, two years ago, Ago, when a bunch of people here started taking on that Keystone tar seat, everybody said, don't even bother. This thing is a done deal. You know, we're, well, you know, it may still happen. We got to keep fighting as hard as we can. But two years later, they have not built it yet. You know? um, and, and when I was up in Canada, 
with our First Nations friends, they were saying, we can tell that you guys are, are, are making some progress because the banks don't want to give any money anymore to the tar sands, you know? Because they know, they know at every turn, they know at every turn they're going to be opposed. And once people started talking about the Keystone Pipeline, then what do you know? People started thinking about other pipelines, like the ones that have been under there for 60 years. They've been there that whole time, but it just takes bringing them into the front of people's minds. And then everybody starts to say, huh, that might have seemed like a good idea in 1950, but a lot of things seem like a good idea in 1950 that don't seem like such a good idea anymore, you know? And, 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 so, and so there's this movement there's this movement, and the movement is the most important thing, and it's so important that you be a part of it locally, and it's so important that sometimes those local parts come together into something larger.